West Coast Conference Commissioner Jamie Zaninovich is with us on this final day of the tournament. Half the title done, one more to give out later today. What's been your feel for this, uh, this week? I think we've had a great week. You know, very competitive games, packed building, great fan bases. Uh, you know, the women's championship was a great game. BYU obviously had a, a great performance. I'm very hopeful that both of those schools will be playing in the NCAA tournament in a couple of weeks. So I think it's been a it's been a good week here in Las Vegas. What's been the reaction with the BYU crowd in the arena for the first time for your conference tournament from just about everybody else? Oh, I think it's been great. You know, I think people are a little bit used to a big fan following here because if uh, you saw over the past couple nights, Gonzaga has sure. a very big fan following. So it was an interesting dynamic, an interesting dynamic on Saturday uh, with Gonzaga playing BYU on the men's side, uh, and you sort of had a half and half building approximately. And I think the fans started sort of challenging each other to up their game, sort of like the way they did on the court, which that's what you want. I mean, college athletics is about great rivalries and people that have such a strong affinity for the schools. So I thought it was pretty neat. Been a lot of newness for BYU you including this tournament but throughout the course of the season going to the different venues and new for the for the current members as well officiating has gotten a lot of people all in in a lather especially some of the fans and as you send the programs out to get better in the offseason as a conference, do you look at the officials, too, and say, hey, here's areas where we want to get better? Well, we're constantly evolving, evaluating everything we do, obviously. I've noticed that, that BYU fans have a specific interest in officiating. I've, I've heard from that. <laughs> um, you know, it, like anything else, we, we stand behind our processes and what we do. So uh, we work very closely with the Pac-12, something that folks may not know is about 75% of our officials are also Pac-12 officials. So mo on almost every TV game or otherwise that we have, generally it's a, it's a Pac-12 crew. So what we'll do in the offseason, is work with the Pac-12, our coordinator, their coordinator. We have a training session uh, this summer where we bring in Ed Rush, who's an esteemed former uh, NBA official and does a lot of training. And they'll sit in a room for two days and go over situations on video and talk through them. Then they'll go on the court and they'll evaluate new officials. They'll talk with the veterans about how they can get better. We do a lot of video. We evaluate video after every game. Right. So um, we're putting a lot of resources and time into officiating. It's important. You know, the games are too high stakes not to. So On Sunday, speaking of high stakes, you'll be in the room as your committee selects the uh, field for the NCAA tournament. How does that work when you're a bubble team looking in? Kind of give the idea sure. to the fan base of what to expect and what's going on behind the scenes. Well, it's my first selection process, so I'll let you know a lot more uh, after Sunday. Your book but will be out next yeah, week. Uh, in terms of, of what I've learned through the mock selections that we've done and my preparation for the process is basically the way it works is I'll leave here uh, tomorrow. We'll have dinner as a committee tomorrow night in Indianapolis. We'll get up, do some work Wednesday. We'll go through our conference monitoring process, which is the conferences are all divided among the 10 of us. Everybody has specific conferences that they don't advocate for, but they monitor. And so we'll give our reports on how we see that conference. And then we'll have a first ballot due uh, tomorrow or Wednesday at 4.30. We will vote for the two categories. One, who we think are the teams that are in at that point, the at-large teams, and then those who should be under consideration. Every school at that point that receives eight of the 10 votes will be put into the tournament. Uh, they're in. Uh, no matter what happens. No matter there. what. And okay. on a typical year, as I understand it, that'll be between 20 and 28 schools. Okay. So then you're left with another nine at-large um, slots and a number of other schools that are under consideration. Uh, so a bubble school would be put in the under consideration pool. And then over the next five days, it'll be 125, 150 votes where we're constantly uh, listing eight schools for consideration and then ranking them. And as you rank them, they accrue points, and those that get enough votes or points to get in will be moved in. Do you get an opportunity at dinner or whatever to, to tell your colleagues, say, we deserve three bids out of the WCC? Let me tell you why. I, I certainly would never say that. Um, I think, you know, if my well, colleagues uh, ask say, me, just, hey, it's on the table. <laughs> you know, our job once we get in the room is to be big picture oriented. Our responsibility is the integrity right, of this sure. event to select, bracket, and seed it. So those conversations are not are not had. Uh, I, I do think that, you know, talking basketball with this group of people in this room over the past year, we've had five or six meetings. There's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, respect, I think, nationally for our conference and what we've been able to do. So, uh, you know, I will not be in the room during any discussions or any votes on, on BYU or anybody else in our conference, but I, I can tell you, having seen the process, um, the right process will be run. BYU will get a very fair shake. And, you know, the other thing is there's a lot of basketball to be played sure. between now and then. Do I mean, you think BYU will get in? I, I couldn't even say that today because there's okay. too much that, that needs to happen between now and then. Okay. I, I, I'm confident that they've built an NCAA-worthy uh, profile, but that doesn't always translate to inclusion in the tournament. It just depends on how things shake out. All right. Well, we'll see the beat goes on. Thanks for inviting us to your party down Absolutely. here. Absolutely. It's been a lot of fun having you here. Thanks, Dave. We'll look forward to next season. Thank you, Jamie.